back. How did you get in the credit game? You're young. You're probably, what, 20 years old at that point? Not even. So I got my first credit card when I was like 16 years old, when I lied on the application and said I was 18. By the time I turned 18, I had at least 10 or 15 grand in credit. And, and then I messed my credit up, so I had to learn how to fix it because I messed it up. Then once I messed mine up and somebody else messed theirs up, I taught them how to fix theirs after I fixed mine. And then it just turned into a business, right? Because I was intrigued with credit. I wanted to okay, I first got my first credit card. How do I get the limit extended? What do I do? So I just kind of by trial and error created a system for credit, not even doing any research. It was just just my experience. Uh, again, I was that kid that threw whatever against the wall and whatever stuck, right? And that's how I got jammed up because there's a lot of the things I did, there was nothing wrong with it. It was the method that I chose to use to get it. And the reason why I chose the method I chose is because I didn't know anything else. You know, our people perish because of what? Lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important to me to make sure that our kids have information. So you don't have to, like, look at Donald Trump, right? He paid $750 on his taxes in 2017 or 18, I just yep. Most people, oh, he's a crook. No, he just knew the law. Right. So it, 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 he navigated it to make it legal. And that's what we fail to do a lot of times with business, because we don't know that we need to. Tax laws are in place and he navigated and mastered the tax system. Um, do I think that, that it's fair? Probably not. But this is where the laws are. So what usually people do that are Caucasians, they learn the law and they learn how to master the law and make it work for them. So while you were doing your your credit business, was it on the up and up, or did you find a way to no, have a scam even it within was, that? But it, it wasn't. Like, it wasn't what I know now. Now I could probably repair credit legally because mm -hmm. I didn't know what the rules were. So in the beginning, I was just, I was scamming, but not scamming because I wanted to scam just because... I was doing what I knew how to do. And I really had a lack of information. So I processed the information that I had and made it work for me. Gotcha. How did you move from credit to real estate? And even within your real estate, building that business, your life, you know, you came into contact with rappers that many people know, celebrities, ball players, like how, how do you transition from a girl who's doing credit to real estate to now having all of these different kind of clients? So let's start here. My father and mother, I told you, came from Kinston, North Carolina and they were dirt poor. My father used his city job to build his credit to get real estate. Mm -hmm. And one of the second homes he purchased was a four family property in East Flatbush, Brooklyn for my aunt because his sister, was renting these places and didn't have a good place to stay. So he wanted to create a home for her. So he bought this, I watched my father buy this four family home and I, and I watched his tenants pay off his mortgage. And then I watched him do it again with the three family home that he bought. And I saw the same cycle. So I learned at a very early age, how real estate could actually translate into generational wealth. So not only did my father buy those properties, he bought his sister a home, his other sister a home in North Carolina. He bought his mother a home. He eventually ended up buying his other sister a home. So I just watched how my father was able to work a regular nine to five job and become a multimillionaire through real estate. So I knew that I also wanted in. My father also helped me purchase my first property when I was 18, 19 years old. I owned a three family property in Brooklyn um, on Covert Street. Mm -hmm. And that from, from there, I kind of learned the game and I actually sold that property. I bought it for like 200,000 and I sold it for close to four and I thought I did something. That property today is worth about $2 million if I would have held on to it, right? Wow. So I learned the power of how real estate could be the savings account for a lot of black folks that don't really you know, earn that much. You could use this and pay it off and it could be something that creates a legacy for your family. So that's how I got in. And then I just took it to another level. So again, I've kind of always been smart, learning, seeing what was around me. But then again, I didn't have the right method because no one ever trained me. I never had formal training. So I kind of just did what I knew how to do. And I cut some corners and I took what you call some shortcut cuts, which ended up kind of ruining my life because that landed to a decade plus sentence in federal prison. 
So, you know, today, again, I try to arm people with information so that they don't have to take shortcuts and that they can win the right way now. Okay. How exactly did you land in prison? What was your crime? And, and where in your story did this crime occur? Because from the outside looking in, it doesn't seem too bad. You're in credit, you, in, in using your words. I was a Robin Hood. I was helping black people get opportunities that they were normally closed out of. However, I wasn't doing it the right way. So it set me up for the kill. First of all, I became very, very, very uh, influential and pretty wealthy quick. So that that gains envy. So anybody listening, anytime you get something quick and you gain envy of folks, folks are waiting for you to fall down. So people will set you up, mess you up because you didn't get it the right way. So it doesn't even make sense to do it that way, especially if you're in the limelight. It goes back to like the BMF case, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're probably some of the pioneers in our time of drug lords, but they were showing and flashy and everybody seen. It. Eventually you setting yourself up if you're not doing things right and you being out there and being flashy. And I was super flashy. I had every car, all the spinning rims or cars when the spree wells was in, all the jimmy, all the dude. Like it was just, it was ridiculous. So people were watching me and I had a lot of envy. And then I was dealing with this mortgage broker who caught the attention of the feds because he was doing the wrong thing. And one thing led to another thing. And when they started watching me and they saw the cars and the influence and all the stuff and this young girl, they felt something was wrong. And as when the feds come, even if something ain't wrong, if they keep fishing, they're going to find something. And mm -hmm. that's what happened. Long story short, me taking shortcuts in the financing, um, the mortgage broker had to hook up at Lehman Brothers Bank. And so we was getting the mortgages to an inside connect, pushing them through when our people didn't actually qualify. So that was the crime. The crime was fake paperwork, fake pay stubs and W-2s and pushing people in places and spaces that they didn't really belong. And doing that was technically bank fraud. And so I eventually got convicted of conspiracy, seven counts of conspiracy to bank fraud and bank fraud. I owned over $30 million worth of properties between Alpine and Saddle River, New Jersey, which is two of the most prominent places in um, yep. New Jersey where you got Diddy and Russell Simmons and Little Kim and Chris Rock and all kind of black affluent people like that are buying these really, really high end properties. And I had nine of them um, at the age of 25. And long story short, when the feds came in and they saw how I was able to illegally obtain these properties, they came for them and they came for me. And um, I ended up being sentenced in 2008 to 151 months in federal prison, which equated to 12 and a half years. And out of that 12 and a half year sentence, I served nine years behind bars and a year on house arrest. So it just wasn't worth it. Like the money I made, I could have made that legitimately. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.